welcome everyone. Uh, it's great to see everyone back in 3D in live form, uh, so we're thrilled to have you. Uh, my name is Mike Hefner. I'm gonna introduce our session and act as the moderator. Uh, this is uh, intentionally uh, formatted as more of a, as it turns out, uh, a chat among friends. <laughs> so I'm not gonna call it a fireside because we're in sunny southern Florida. So a um, um, couple things to tee up here. Uh, we do have a couple of things that we wanna go through. We wanna talk about State Street's journey, uh, the good, the bad, the ugly. <laughs> Um, but we're also gonna leave some time at the end for uh, audience uh, Q&A. So we wanna make this interactive. It's not gonna be uh, death by PowerPoint. Uh, it's gonna be very, very much a conversation amongst friends and a discussion of a journey, um, a journey with Appian. With that said, I'm gonna ask my, uh, my speakers and I guess co-hosts, uh, <laughs> since we're all hosting this together, to introduce themselves. Dennis? Um, good morning, everybody. Um, Dennis Mackey. I'm with State Street Global Advisors, which is the asset management arm of um, State Street. And I head up um, a process and data group within investment operations. Craig Leskowski. I run a process improvement team. And uh, Appian is one of our uh, tools in our toolkit. Uh, and, uh, I love the opportunity to kind of speak about all the different ways we've used it. And Mike Hefner, Appian. I lead Appian Solutions and Industry Go to Market. And full disclosure, the last badge, employee badge, I wore before I wore, uh, wore the Appian badge, which started about nine years ago, was a State Street badge. So um, it's all coming full circle. So with that said, why don't we jump in a little bit. Uh, it'd be great if, and, and you should both take this, introduce a little bit your organization, the part of the organization that you're part of, uh, and set some context for the, uh, for, the, for the audience. Sure, so SSGA, or State Street Global Advisors, is um, one of the largest asset managers in the world. You might be familiar with uh, our brand, Spider. Um, Spy is, is one of our um, main products. Craig and I mostly work on the institutional side of the business, um, where we're, we're helping clients um, with, with pensions, um, defined contribution um, across the globe. And so our use of Appian, um, we've been with Appian for 11 years now. I can't believe, yep. it's, uh, I can't believe it's 11 years. Yep. And we were early adopters on the global advisor side. So yep. we now have uh, 18, 18, 18, I have 18 applica applications in production, 825 user licenses around the globe. We have users in APAC, EMEA, everywhere. And it's now spreading into other areas of State Street. Yep. So we kind of were the original ones to kind of bring it in. It took our colleagues around the other sides of State Street uh, some time to, uh, to come on board with it. But um, we have two other business units that have applications live, uh, two or three more in the can, uh, ready to go. So yep. all in all, I think across State Street, we're close to 1,400 uh, user licenses. Yeah, thank you for profiling that. Uh, can you give a little sense of, I know there are num numerous applications, but give us a sense for the types of things you've built. Sure. Uh, the interesting thing about Appian is you can use it all different sizes and scales. You know, yeah. I, I have two applications that we built in 10 weeks to solve a problem because we had to get off another platform and we need to stand something up really quickly. I have other applications that it took us, you know, months, uh, if not a year to build, and we're still tinkering with them. We're still making enhancements. We're still kind of building off that original start. So if I think about Global Advisor specifically and kind of the areas we cover, we do a lot in client onboarding. Yeah. Um, so I have a suite of applications in client onboarding. Uh, co they cover contracting, KYC, and account and system setup. We also do some applications that help the investment world. Uh, we have one for benchmark requests. We have one for um, portfolio compliance. That's kind of our kind of few applications in that investment space. And then the last area is um, our, our product and kind of funds team. Um, we've actually used Appian as a, and maybe Dennis, you want to talk about this, the, uh, how we've used Appian as kind of a front end. Uh, exactly. So, so we use Appian to manage the process of setting up a new product or, or, or strategy, and, and it sits on top of Informatica, and our, our product team is able to walk, um, walk through the process of setting up, setting up a product, which of course has all the legal regulatory hurdles, but, but we're able to guide that with, with Appian. And Informatica, which is a great product um, in the data space, has a terrible front end, so, so 
cleaning it up with Appian has made it a lot more user friendly, so we're able to get our investment um, facing colleagues to, to willingly do data entry, which is, is a difficult thing to do. And just to add some additional color outside of State Street Global Advisors in bank proper, both on the custody side and in what used to be called middle office, you know, alpha case management, Appian, uh, a number of initiatives around onboarding, uh, including a deployment of the Appian connected onboarding solution. Uh, so there's lots of momentum and it all started with with the two of you, which is phenomenal. And it's a great yeah. opportunity with, with Alpha to, to extend our onboarding application, which is client-focused, asset owner-focused, all the way to the back and middle office um, and, and getting efficiencies. So we're asking clients for, for data once. We're, we're passing documents around once. We're not doing that right. multiple times. So it's, it's going to be a huge benefit to, to the firm as a whole to, to get that done. One of the other things I really appreciate about your story and your journey has been the effectiveness of being able to do onshore, offshore with your Hangzhou, uh, Hangzhou captive. You wanna talk about that a little bit and how that works? Exactly, so, so as we started, it, it was a challenge to, to, to manage an onshore, offshore development team, time zone difficulties, language difficulties at, time, at times, but, but since we've got up and running, our, our team in China is one of our biggest assets. We don't have to go out for professional services very often, if at all, our, our team in China is able to pick up requirements and really turn things around quickly. Um, so, so it's been a huge success and, and that's, that's something that other areas of State Street are looking to replicate. Hopefully not steal our talent. <laughs> but, but I'd add, there was a journey to get there and I, you alluded to that a little yeah. bit. It's, you, don't, you don't get to 18 applications, 1400 users uh, overnight. You really have to start somewhere. So we used Appian for professional services a number of times, that worked out great. And now the model we have is it's my team that goes in, works with the business, I, I, I like to say half my job is politics these days. Yeah. It's getting you know the team in London and the team in Boston to get on the same page around you know uh, what something should look like or what the process flow should be. But it's my team that's writing up. This, uh, uh, my team works with the users to define what the process is going to look like, what those applications are going to look like. They're writing up stories in Jira. We do all our uh, all our um, uh, we're running agile. We're doing all our stories in Jira. And then it's a combination of, we actually have some great, um, uh, we do have a, a couple great onshore developers as well. Uh, Jay, our architect, our Appian architect, uh, is amazing. Um, he's a, lucky he's gonna be having twins in a, in a, in a, in a couple weeks, so he uh, couldn't join us here, otherwise he'd be up on stage with us. Um, Amir, his colleague, is here. So we have a few kind of uh, developers in Boston. They can sit in in the same time zone, listen, but then the kind of workhorse we have, if you will, right. is that offshore team in China. Right. So you know, we can be writing up stories during the day. Uh, Jade and, and the IT team here is give, uh, in the US is giving a little bit of um, uh, guidance, a little more structure around it, and then they're churning overnight. It's almost like magic. You know, you come in the next day, there's a list of questions for you. There's, it, it works. With, the time zones actually work to our advantage in that case. But that was always the vision, right? How do you how do you optimize the value of the clock for a global firm? So that's the development side. How about some of the business benefits? Because you do have such a such an expansive global footprint. What were some of the benefits in terms of unifying? So, so transparency is huge. So Appian has great dashboarding features out of the box. So when you think of our onboarding applications, we're able to have transparency across the globe. So we can follow the sun. We have our, our KYC team is, is mostly based out of India and they, they're using Appian. So the same thing as Craig's mentioning is, is they finish some, some work overnight and that, that feeds back into to Appian. So a client facing type, type person can understand where we sit in KYC as we're trying to bring a deal in. Yeah. Um, so that, that's been huge. That's great. Um, switching gears, it's a journey. We're having a chat amongst friends. The journey probably had some up and downs, and I'm in particular thinking about some of the audience members that are probably here for the first time. That are probably thinking about Appian and the role it could play in solving some of their critical business challenges. So advice? Craig, Craig alluded to the politics. The, the first thing you really have to do is nail down the process. Appian's a wonderful platform and you can do a lot with it, but if you're, if you're not getting buy-in on the process from the stakeholders and getting everybody involved from, from the get-go, it doesn't matter how nice of an application you build if people aren't going to use it. So that, right. that's been one of the more difficult things it, that we've had to deal with. It, it is interesting because folks want to legislate process through technology. They think you can sprinkle Appian dust on a broken process and it's magically going to be a better, pro, be, better uh, process. Uh, 
Appian's just going to kind of solidify the bad process you have because when you've taken something out out of like that's random emails and yeah. not timed well, and you put it into Appian, well, it adds structure. Right. Structure is ultimately a good thing, but if you uh, if you put structure if you put a lot of structure on something that's fundamentally broken, it's still fundamentally broken. Um, I guess going back to uh, you were talking about the, uh, the the journey a little bit and uh, in, in, in other challenges. I'd say don't bite off more than you can chew. Hmm. I think one of, the ch one of the challenges we have, and, and it doesn't matter whether it's Appian or any kind of technology project, is you know, the big projects get funded. And so on, you don't want to go in day one with a $5 million three-year build. You're not really taking advantage of low code there. You're, you're, you're essentially just doing a, a, a long two-year build. Right. Start with smaller applications. It, there's, no, there's, no, there's no shame in building a small application in, in, in 10 weeks that solves a business problem. Sure, it's not going to get the headlines that a, a big, giant deployment is going to do, but uh, we use Appian in small cases, and we use it in big, case, uh, in big cases. There's nothing wrong with using it for both uh, for small and big. And, and, and just to echo that, that, that really builds advocacy within the business. So we're, yeah. we're in a, a dual technology operations type role, but once you have, have believers in the investment suite or in the client facing suite, it really gets to become a lot easier to, to sell the bigger projects. So, so we, we sort of get them hooked and then, then get repeat customers. And one thing I love about Appian in that, that respect is, is you don't have to relicense. So it's not additional licenses every time you want to build something. So once you have users, they come back to you with ideas and you can build it and there's not this whole cost conversation outside of our internal development, which right. is, is a huge feature. And that's very much intentional. And obviously our models continue to evolve, but the intention, Appian's intention, is to lean into you and have you all lean into us, right? And, and, and remove the friction that may be associated with some of those structures. And we're getting better. We're by no means perfect. Things keep evolving. Um, so, I'm going to keep going on challenges. Give me some more. Lessons learned. So, we've talked about this in the past, is yeah. low code is not no code. <laughs> low code does not mean no developers. So, anybody out here on the IT side, thank you for making us look good. But you need to have developers if you want to do rich applications where you, where you integrate with, with other platforms that you might have. So, I, I think it has been at times, and the messaging has changed over the years, um, senior management thought low code meant free development, and that's not the case. You have to invest, you have to have good developers, you have to have good business analysts. Um, low code's not magic, as, as Craig said. And, and going to, the, I guess, the theme of the con uh, conference of, of being connected, um, the other challenge is getting other IT groups on the same kind of prioritization that you are. So that's great that I can direct my resources to stand up an Appian application in, in, right. in three months, but the queue on the corporate side to integrate with their, with their system and build out that, you know, that legacy system that needs some kind of custom API because it's not a modern platform like right. Appian. Right. You know, those are the things, getting those things in sync is, is a challenge. It, and it's, honestly, it's still a challenge for us. That there, there's a lot more we can do with the data that we have in Appian, pushing it to other areas and really taking advantage of what we've already built out that we're not there yet because we need, we're on priority, a priority list for other applications. That makes so much sense. And it's, it's not really a limiting factor that Appian brings to the table. It's really how do you coordinate the priorities around the organization to make sure you're on their dance card, right? Exactly. Right. Perfect. Um, I'm going to ask for more challenges. <laughs> so d data quality, we, we, we talk a lot about data. We use Appian um, as a means to reduce data entry and capture, capture data once. So that's doing a great job to improve data quality um, over time. But when you, when you deliver a process, you need to make sure that, that data is in good order before you get started. Because if you, it's the same as, as coding a bad process. If you have bad data feeding into that process, it, it's not going to work as intended. One example we have of that is we, we integrate our onboarding application with Salesforce. And if the, the client facing people pick on the salespeople, if they don't capture the data correctly up front, KYC fails and we go back to the start. And they want to blame the application. It's not the application. It's all about that data up front. The other, just, I'm going to yeah. hook on, on to that. Give me a rank order which you, which you think are a bigger challenge, salespeople or, or traders? I mean, give me a... Oh, salespeople all day. <laughs> they, they, they want us to... Um, They're not listening, are they? There's no salespeople here, right? Um, <laughs> at least not from State Street, they, they want to somehow be able to, to, to project all the data without capturing it. Yes. Somehow. And we yeah. haven't been able, Appian hasn't solved that. All the benefit, none of the work. Exactly. Right. Right. 
I'll take us in a completely different direct, uh, direction for uh, challenges in, in something I wish, when I was out in the audience a, a, a few years ago, wish I had heard, you know, be prepared for rework. Mm. And uh, it, it's not rework because, you know, maybe you built it wrong, it's the, the requirements change, especially in the yeah. process space. You're gonna wanna build in flexibility to your teams. This isn't a one and done, I built it, it's perfect, we're gonna put it up on a shelf and admire it and not use it. Processes change, teams change, roles and responsibilities change. When we first built our KYC application, it was a totally uh, Boston-based team doing KYC. Um, we now have teams in both Poland and Bangalore that help, uh, help out with KYC. So there were some changes we had to make to the application for the process. Yeah. Um, another example is um, contracting. Um, you know, we use, uh, our contracting application guides the production of our contracts. We have some automation built in where we're actually be able to pull data from Salesforce, automatically populate some contract documents. When we first did that automation, it took time. Like it, it took a lot of time to build that automation. We didn't realize how much, how often we were changing our contract templates. Yeah. And the lawyers didn't understand, because they're lawyers, that when you, when they redid the contract every three months, that we, we couldn't keep up on the development side to keep the automation in line. So we spent six months standing up the uh, automation and it, was, it broke three months in, into use. What we had to do is we had to work with our colleagues in legal to build a smarter contract template in addition to just doing the automation. So what we did is we put all the legal jargon that they want to tweak every other week, it seems like, at the front of the contract, <laughs> right. and we put all those kind of data-driven pieces that we automated in the back of the contract. Yeah. That wasn't happy, and that, uh, that was understanding, you know, having done it wrong once, yeah. and realized, you know, okay, we're, the, the, the bottleneck was us on the development side. It was figuring out, right, how can we do this smarter? Oh, we got to go back and we got to compromise with our, our legal colleagues and figure out how we can integrate automation, but still give them that flexibility they needed to be able to, be able to adapt to a real world where things change. So yeah, we've, bashed, we've bashed legal, we've bashed salespeople. <laughs> Who's next? <laughs> Who's Human next? resources. Who's next? You, you, this, is, this is important. You've not bashed IT because we have, Never. We have two <laughs> business people. <laughs> you have two business people up here, one with a data focus, one with a process focus. Wensong is in the room, right, I believe. I know he's here. So you're partner in all of this is IT. And while Wensong is not on the stage, you operate as a, as a collective one, right? How does, how does Appian help? So a Appian helps in, in that we're able to quickly spin things up and do the, do the front end development where, where there might not be a pretty UI somewhere else. And we control our own destiny working with IT very closely and that's, I wouldn't say that was ever ugly on the journey, but, but it was bad at times, mm. lear learning curve, all that. But at this point, we are effectively the same team, and yeah. we have dedicated resources. That's a, that's a big part of it. If, you, if you're always pulling from, from outside resources, you're, you're gonna continuously have to get approval. We have this dedicated team, so we just have our priority list, and we just, we just run through it, which has been very successful. Yeah, the, the, the partnership's really the, the true word there. Um, and, and that's the only way to really make I think the offshore model work yeah. is it, it can't feel like you're simply just throwing things over the wall and then you know walking away and, 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 and hoping it's all magic and going to work. Um, another piece we haven't talked about with our offshore team um, is our we do QA over there as well, um, and they're really um, they're really fantastic in terms of the testing that they do of every permutation of every drop down I have, um, and that that lets the business users focus less on these kind of arbitrary, not arbitrary I should say, but the monotonous testing in the, in the, in the of, uh, they don't want to test every combination. They want right. to test, does it fit my business need? Is the, yeah. it, did the right person get the right task? Not kind of the nuts and bolts. So to have that strong QA team has really helped us as well. Time is like flying by. So I want to give five minutes at the end for questions. So um, let's just take a couple of minutes to talk about what's on the horizon, what's coming next. So, so the big thing we're doing is we, we have two things I'll touch on and, and Craig can expand, is we have an account master, so, so think of portfolio data that we need to set up um, when we have a new account. We're replacing our legacy um, account master, moving that to Informatica, and we're going to do the same thing we did with our product master and, and put Appian as the front end. Mm -hmm. And what that's going to do is, is going to facilitate the gathering of the data, so you have to hit compliance, legal, portfolio management when you're setting up an account, so we're gonna automate that so it's not as much chasing 
and, and it all flows um, naturally into the product master, or the, the account master. And then the other part you alluded to is as, as we integrate with the broader State Street Bank on, on Charles River and on Alpha, we're looking to use Appian to orchestrate a lot of that, that back and forth. It's, it's complex, it's ugly at times, trying to set up an account across back, middle, and front office. So we're, we're looking to use Appian to, to make that transparent, um, reduce some of the redundant asks, and, and just improve that process. Perfect, thank you for sharing. Craig? You know, for me, a, a big part of it is I have this great tool, Appian, and I can use it anywhere. It's now getting a little bit more formal around our prioritization. Yeah. Um, you know, Dennis talked earlier how it's kind of selling itself now at this point. Yeah. So we'll have people coming out of the blue saying, oh, I need something, I need something. Um, and it, I, I love so many of our applications so much, I always want to tinker with them, but I think to a certain degree we have, we have to put the brakes on a few of these and say, hey, you know, you had, you had your time, I got to move on to the next thing. So right. for me, it's standing up um, a better transparency and uh, Transparency into the project list and our back, our, our ultimate backlog. Since we're we're no longer uh, in testing phase here, you know, with with 18 applications plus the other, you know, half dozen around the rest of State Street. That, it's a lot of a lot of applications and a lot of mouths to feed. Who are asking for, you know, I need this enhancement or I, I need this new project. So. Yeah, and that's yeah. a challenge too because the success breeds requests, and we have a lot of stakeholders in different business units. Yeah. So we have it's it's difficult at times managing um, the demand. You know, I love that phrase, success, built on success. I was having a conversation with a newer Appian customer who are about to go live, and the question was, we can see so much on the horizon that we could do, how do we get buy-in? And I think it's about exactly what you just said, success breeds success, and when you have that first success, don't be shy about walking the halls. Show it, right? Talk about how quickly exactly. it went. Challenges overcome, how you overcome those. Um, I think is a big part of this. So we have four minutes left. We're gonna try to do this uh, in, a, in a structured way. We have roving mics. We wanna make sure you use the mic uh, just so we can capture the recording. But uh, questions for Dennis and Craig. Right in the front, Luke. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it, guys. Thanks for your time. Um, you've used it for 11 years, so you're definitely an early adopter, but also an early adopter of low-code technology in general. And I'm just wondering what the driver was initially for you guys to bring on that kind of technology um, so many years back and what you originally thought the functionality would be, right? Maybe it was more simplistic back then just to automate a few things and then kind of how that's evolved to present day with all of the complex things that you're doing now. So the initial use case was contracting. So, so we deal with a lot of client contracts and, and contract maintenance. So the original use case was really to get out of email, get out of the SharePoint type environment to have delegated tasks around the contracting life cycle. And how that's evolved, and, and it's really a testament to Craig's work, is we've automated a good bit of that. So at first it wasn't automated at all, it was just really that workflow and formalizing it. And now we have these contracts are, are pre-populated. We have, have some intelligence in there. We, we need to get a little bit better there, maybe using AI or ML to, mm -hmm. to, to help with that. But we've really come a long way since, since that. And then contracting is so central to everything that we were able to expand out organically, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Uh, next question, uh, front row, Luke. Luke, you should hang in the middle, I think. <laughs> Get the steps in. Uh, hi there. Uh, this is Vijaya here. Uh, so my question is, I, I, you spoke about the, like a sales or client relations and then the legal compliance. There's so many teams involved, right? How did you bring everyone together, understood their process and started building? Because that would be like a, like a kind of a very big, would be a big bang release. Or did you take it in an iterative process uh, dealing with different uh, onboarding, uh, onboarding is naturally a process that touches a lot of areas of the organization. So we did have to do, I'm going back to 2015, we, we had a big bang sort of project kickoff and then the, the scrums were really important and then we did a, a bi-weekly demo to make sure that people were, were on board with what we were doing, um, no pun intended. So it's the stakeholder management is a, is a huge aspect. It can't be overlooked. If you don't have good business partners, the process won't work. You can't, yeah. you can't design it in a vacuum. And I'd add to that, I guess, you know, we've talked about how great our IT partners are. I guess that's why my team exists. 
it, it's, it's my job to fight the political fights. It's to identify the stakeholders, get those folks in the room to work things through. So IT doesn't have to do that. I, I, I don't want IT having to wrestle business requirements out. I want them doing what they do best, which is the IT side, uh, side of it. Uh, I'd say one key, though, is if you can identify a key stakeholder or someone who wants, who wants to raise their hand and, and be that advocate for that department for Appian, rather than having five different people in legal, you know, that one lawyer who kind of likes technology and kind of has a bent for technology, you know, say, can you be my Appian guru so I can go to just one lawyer as opposed to the entire legal team? Same with any other department. Finding that one person who knows process, gets process, and wants, is excited about the technology to be your partner along, uh, 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 along that journey. We'll do one more. Okay. <laughs> I know he's giving me the, I can't do another. In the, way in the back, Luke, I misled you. <laughs> Hi, my name, my name is Nikki Shah, and I'm working with Tata Consultancy Services. My question is really, um, and this is kind of different, but how have you used uh, or integrated technology to identify, measure, and report on climate-related risk and opportunities and some of the impact on that, if there's any thought process on that? So, so climate-related climate, climate related, so ESG type, type question, we, we don't, I wouldn't say our applications are specific to that. As part of onboarding, of course, we, we onboard ESG accounts and that's managed through the process. Um, and, and our ESG team would be tagged into the contracting process if, if so required. But we don't, I wouldn't say we specifically have anything yeah. with that at, at this point. And let me help you out. There's a session this afternoon I know I didn't pay you off, but there's an ESG related <laughs> session. I think it's around four, is that right? Where we will be talking through how Appian can actually help solve some of the ESG challenges. So I would uh, encourage any of you to please attend. So thank you, uh, that time flew by. Thank you so much. Uh, we very much appreciate it. Thank you so much, Dennis thank and Craig. Thanks, good job. Thank you.